In this video, I'll go over problems 14.6 and 14.7, um, just to give you more practice with um, setting up these linear-to-linear -linear problems and understanding what they're about. Um, I probably won't finish them. I don't want to deprive you of the thrill of finding the right answer on your own, but, but I'll help get you started. Okay, so 14.6, we want to put our thing in the, we want to find out a linear-linear function, right? We want to find out A, B, and C. And 14.6 is easier than 14.5 because they give you the horizontal asymptote. Um, they're saying that the horizontal asymptote is y equals 6. The horizontal asymptote means as x horizontal is this way, right? So as x gets really, really big, as x gets really, really big, what does y go towards? And they say it goes to 6. And remember, if you look at our formula here, when x gets really, really big, b and c don't matter anymore. They're like, no matter how big they are, we can make x bigger. So all that matters is the ax over x, and then the x's cancel, and we're left with a. So when they say that y equals 6 is a horizontal asymptote, that means that it boils down to we, b and c's don't matter. So we have ax over x, so we end up with just a. So right away, we know that a is 6. That's great, because we know one of the letters. So right away, we can say because they give us the horizontal asymptote that y is equal to a is 6, so 6x plus b divided by x minus c. Now, they have to give us two other things to figure out the other two letters, b and c. Okay, and they do. They're nice. They say that it passes through these two points, 0, 10, x equals 0, y equals 10, and they pass through um, 3, 7. So x equals 3, y equals 7. Okay, so then we get we get those two equations, two unknowns, we solve for a B and C. So in other words, you set Y equal 10. So one of our equations is 10 is equal to X is zero. Okay, zero is really nice. That, that makes our life easier too. Because we plug in X equals zero, that's zero, and that's zero. So we get B over negative C, right? Because X is zero, X is zero, so B over negative C. Um, Let's rewrite that as b, put the negative c over here, so b is equal to negative 10c, right? Put, multiply negative c times a 10, which makes negative 10c, and it's nice, I'll put the b first. I don't know, it just looks nice that way. All right, that's one equation. Now let's do the other point, 3, 7. y is 7, always make sure you get the y one, right? Second one is the y. This is the x one, so 7 is equal to x is 3, so it would be 3 times a. It's nice to write the 3 first. The a, yeah. Um, plus b. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is our equation. Sorry, sorry. Um, we know what a is. So x is 3. So we have 3, 6 times 3 is 18. So 18 plus b divided by x is 3. So 3 minus c. Um, let's multiply the 3 minus c over here. So now we have 3 times 7 is 21. So 21 negative c times 7 is minus 7c is equal to 18 plus b. Um, we can combine the 18 and the 21, right? Let's do the same thing. Let's put the b by itself like we did up here. So b by itself, put the 18 over here. Subtract 18 from 21, that's 3. So I get b is equal to 3 minus 7c, right? Because the b by itself is 18, 21 minus 18 is 3. Yep, did that right. So now we have two equations. Um, so all you got to do now is set b equal to b, set negative 10c equal to 3 minus 7c, solve for c, and then you'll know what c is, and if you know what c is, you know that b is just negative 10 times c, or b is 3 minus 7, so use both, check your answer, make sure you get it right. And then we have our linear to linear equation. We can plug in b, and we can plug in for c. Okay, so that's the whole idea. In this case, since they told us the horizontal asymptote, it made it a lot easier. It's just two equations and two unknowns versus three equations and three unknowns. Okay, so that will let you finish that one. That's 14.6. 14.7 is very similar, um, but now they, it's a word problem. you got to figure out the things on your own, but that's not so bad. Um, 
kind of makes sense. So this is 14.7. So this is the one where you're studying for a test. So 14.7 says, the more you study for a certain exam, the better your performance on it, which makes sense. If you study for 10 hours, your score will be 65%. Okay, so score is like the Y, that's what you get. Time is like the X, okay? So we'll use a T here instead of X. So we want something like Y is equal to AT plus B divided by T minus C. And now they give us some points. Um, again, they say if we study for 10 hours, that's T equals 10, we get a 65%. So 10 comma 65 is one point. And then they tell us another point. If we study for 20 hours, um, you'll get a 95%. So 20 hours, you get a 95%. <clears throat> and then they say, you can get as close as you want to perfect score by studying long enough. A perfect score is 100%, okay? That means as time goes to infinity, right? As, as we study longer and longer, as time goes to infinity, our score Y goes to 100. That means that is our horizontal asymptote. Okay, because this is like as T gets really, really big, B and C don't matter anymore. All you have is this part, and the T's cancel with F with A. So Y equals 100, or in other words, A is equal to 100. This is a horizontal asymptote. They give you the horizontal asymptote. That's wonderful. That's just like the last problem, because we know the horizontal asymptote. Um, and so that makes it easier because we know A. So right away we can write y is equal to 100 t plus b divided by t minus c because the horizontal asymptote is 100. That's the highest score you can get, right? Can't get over 100. Um, so, yep. Okay. Now we have these two points. Just like we did last time, you plug them in. You get two equations and two unknowns. There's not a zero one now, so it's you know a little bit trickier, but, but hardly. Um, and then you can find out what B and C are, and then you can figure out um, how long you need to study to get the score you want. Like they say after, we, after you find it, you plug in 80%, you know, 80% here, and you find what T, how long you have to study to get an 80%. Okay, so again, you use those two points. So I'll, 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 what the heck, I'll do the first one. Let's set up that one. Y is 65, so one point is 65 is equal to X is 10, or T is 10. So 10 times 100 is 1,000. So 1,000 plus B divided by X is 10, 10 minus C. Um, again, multiply both sides. 60, 650 minus 65 C is equal to 1,000 plus B. I would get the B by itself. Put the minus 1,000 over there. So that'd be negative 350, I think that's right, 650 minus 1,000 is negative 350, minus 65C is equal to B. Okay, that's one equation, and now we use that point to get the other equation, and then set them equal, because we had set solve for B in both of them like I did, set them equal, you can get C just like before, and we get C, you can get B from either equation and then you know the formula and then you can say okay what score do you want plug that in for y and you can solve for t to get any to get, figure out how long you have to study for all right good i think these problems are really fun um again the reason why this makes sense for something like a grade is because one over x curves or linear linear curves what you're doing is you're looking for something like this okay where a hundred percent is the best you can do so here's a hundred percent um, and it starts off, in the beginning you study and your score really goes up, but after a while studying longer just doesn't make that much of a difference, right? You don't want to study for a thousand hours to get closer to 100%. Some points, good enough. And that's what these shape of curves do. So they are a very good way to model things like this, where longer you study, it starts not paying off as much. You can only go up a couple more points. You know. um, so again, that's because of the asymptote. It starts off fast and then levels off, which is how many things in nature work. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I'll let you finish it on your own. Good luck.